Now let's work through the process of creating a cluster of arrays for the point of sale terminal's inventory control. Begin by placing a cluster constant. Need to expand this to accommodate three arrays. Then place an array constant. I'm going to hide the index display. Now hold the control and shift buttons down as you click and drag and that way you can replicate that array constant and have three. Now drag a constant into each array to define its particular data type. I need to change the representation of this integer to 64-bit integer. Here's a string constant for the name of the article. And for value, this would be a numeric with a floating point capability. I'll use double for that. Now right click on the cluster frame and choose Arrange Horizontally. Right click, choose Make Type Definition, and note the little black dog ear that appears in the upper left corner. Right click and choose Open Type Definition, and then give meaningful names to the cluster. I'll call this Inventory, and then each of the three arrays. I'd like these to be a little bit cleaner in appearance. I'll turn off the index display on each one of these arrays. Now I need to enable the label visibility for each one. We'll call this code for the barcode number. This is the name of the product and that's the value of the product. Close the type definition with a save and I'll give this the name inventory as a custom control. Make sure that this is created inside your project folder hierarchy. Take a quick look at the LabVIEW project and you'll notice that inventory has automatically been added as an element inside the project. Next, right click on the data highway constant, open type definition, and let's add this inventory as a new lane on the data highway. All right, then close the type definition with a save. And let me show you two different ways for accessing this inventory from the data highway. Start with unbundle by name. Choose inventory. You could choose either all elements or an individual element. I'll begin with all elements. Because this is a cluster, I would then use another unbundle by name. And this way I can access each of those three elements. The second way to do this is still based on a uh, unbundle by name. But in this case, you choose the specific element, in this case, code. And so that way you can access an individual element if you like. All right, let's finish up by initializing the inventory back in the QSM initialize state. I'll tap the data highway, get ready to replace that with this updated value, create a constant for inventory, And now it's a matter of setting values inside these three arrays. Looks like the index displays have come back, but that's okay. I'm just stretching out these elements a bit. You have to, sometimes you have to work a little bit. You need to stretch out an individual element and then you can enter the values. So here's my hypothetical barcode number. Here's the product label and the associated price. Let me pull this down. Pull this down on the first array, the second, and so on. And now you can add the additional barcode numbers, product labels, and prices.